Timothy Colleen took office as the 20th president of the University of Illinois in May of 2015. He brought with him to the U of I more than three decades of experience as an educator, researcher, administrator in public higher ed, and in leadership positions with national scientific research agencies. He hit the ground running in the first months of his presidency. Dr. Colleen led the development of an ambitious new strategic framework to guide the U of I system and its universities in Chicago, Springfield, Urbana-Champaign. Enrollment has since grown to a record 83,000 plus students across the system and its faculty have been chosen to lead important research projects from healthcare to cyber security. Under his leadership, the U of I system has proposed groundbreaking new partnerships with the state of Illinois to support its efforts to transform the lives of students and drive economic growth. Before joining the U of I system, President Colleen served as Vice Chancellor for Research and President of the Research Foundation at the State University of New York. He is a leading researcher in geophysics and space sciences. President Colleen received his bachelor's degree and PhD at University College London, where he earned his doctoral degree in atomic and molecular physics at the age of 23. President Colleen's wife, Roberta, who's not with us today, is also a distinguished scientist. She holds BS, MS, and PhD degrees in geophysics and space physics from the University of California at LA, UCLA. And the Colleens have three children, so without any further ado, President Timothy Colleen. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thanks to the City Club for inviting me back. After three years, and uh, I guess it's about three years since I was here, and I've still got the mug to prove it, so, um, and I could have messed up too badly uh, last time, but it's, uh, thanks for having me back, and I'm going to show some of the same slides I showed back then, just to show you that there's some commitment and some uh, sincerity behind what I said a few years ago. But uh, on behalf of my colleagues across the wonderful University of Illinois system. I want to thank the City Club for 115 years as champions of a civic discourse that raises awareness and drives progress here in Chicago and beyond. And I'm really so proud and humbled that the University of Illinois system shares your mission. We re reaffirmed that commitment just last year to a new set of guiding principles that were adopted to address hot button issues currently facing our universities and campuses across the country. It ensures that we promote, as you do, the public good, and not just through world-class education and research, but through a spirit of civic engagement that we have carried since our first class graduated 150 years ago, a milestone that we celebrated last month. So it challenges us to never stop working on behalf of the taxpayers of Illinois, the taxpayers whose generous support has just been reaffirmed, thankfully, and we're so delighted with that. Uh, and has helped us to make us one of the nation's most accomplished and respected universities. So like you, we're determined to continue to make a difference at every level of society, eliminating barriers to equity, helping solve some of the most pressing social technical challenges of our time, and finding new avenues for relevance. Before I get started, I'd like to introduce and maybe reintroduce a little bit some of the members of our leadership team who are here today. So if you could all just stand for a moment, I hope you'll enjoy, uh, you'll join me welcoming them after I call their names. We have uh, three trustees. Trustee uh, Ramon Cepeda is with us, Trustee Don Edwards, and our newest trustee, Sandy Pearl, uh, and we have a fourth, Pat Fitzgerald, also. So we have four trustees. And, and, and then, not quite a trustee, but the treasurer of the Board of Trustees and our uh, very distinguished Lester McKeever is also with us today. We have Dee Dee Williams, Secretary of the Board of Trustees and of the University, uh, Michael Amaridis, who spoke to you recently. And uh, if you didn't know, I'm the straight man for Michael. He's the one with the humor. 
uh, and uh, I hate going after him because if I go before him, I can get away with being a straight man. Going after him, people say, well, where's the, where's the sense of humor? But anyway, it is what it is. Robert Jones, our chancellor at uh, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Bob. Uh, Bob, Bob Wilson, executive vice president of the University of Illinois system. Ed. Ed Seidel, Vice President for Economic Development and Innovation and the leading genius behind our new innovation agenda, which I'll get to. Avijit Ghosh, Vice President and Chief Financial Officer and Controller. And, and the, what I call the Toms, Tom Barrow, University Council, and Tom Hardy, uh, Office of uh, Government Relations. So, and, and there are others of a magnificent leadership team, and I, I know a lot of you believe this, you get the right people and you, you uh, authorize them and delegate responsibility. It's amazing what can happen. And I think University of Illinois is in that wonderful situation right now. I would like, with your indulgence, everybody who has some kind of connection to the University of Illinois system, any one of our three universities, former prior degrees, almost granted, granted, whatever you'd like to take, to raise your hand just momentarily and look around. You can see, I think, in that forest of hands, the uh, impact that the U of I system has had and will have on the future. And we just uh, graduated 22,000 human beings in the last few weeks, and my hand is still kind of dropping off uh, uh, from all of that. Um, so 150 years ago, the Chicago Tribune wrote an editorial in which it said, this new University of Illinois is a farce believe it or not. Now, I've forgiven them since then. Uh, and it was to do with something to do with, uh, you know, um, uh, divinity schools and secular schools, etc. We've come a long way in 150 years. And uh, it's been a fixture for all but 50 years of our state's existence. And we're wrapping up the Sesquicentennial Centennial celebration last month as we ramp up our bicentennial party. Along the way, the U of I has developed a range of personas that vary widely depending on who you ask and even where you ask. So uh, to many across the state, U of I is still synonymous to Urbana-Champaign, the land-grant, big tin, leafy, beautiful campus that dates nearly to the Civil War. It was the first university after the Civil War, incidentally, to admit women. Think about that impact that that had. First marching band. We invented the marching band. Uh, 20 plus Nobel Prizes. And innovations as long as your arm, and I could give you the full litany, but my favorite today is indoor air conditioning, which I think has changed the face of the nighttime planet as you look down from space. Then here in Chicago, we have a fast-growing campus, 20-plus percent increase in, in uh, enrollment uh, freshmen last year, over 30,000 uh, students now, the fast-growing campus on the city's west side, home to one of the nation's largest medical schools, ranked by the Wall Street Journal in 23 in the country for public universities, shooting up on, in momentum. Uh, and also a long list of innovations that are very important. The one I'm most proud of today is the HIV AIDS uh, a drug that is uh, delivered through partnership with the UN across all of Africa pretty much for free. And that's a huge impact on, on a very important socio-technical challenge. So uh, UIC, people will often say, and I can't say this when my wife is in the room, uh, is it like UCLA? And I say, UCLA what? Uh, because it is the only, to my knowledge, land-grant, comprehensive, research-intensive university, Carnegie One class in a world city. UCLA is not a land-grant. And uh, um, I would say Arizona State is important, but Phoenix ain't Chicago. <laughs> uh, so, and then at, at UIS, in, we have the right side regional university in the shadows of the state capitol. We have 200 students in there now as interns in the state capitol. I think they talk that machinery and the budget discussions in the right direction. National distinction as a leader in online education. And of course, Abraham Lincoln, uh, many of you don't know, had Welsh forebears. I grew up in Wales. Uh, and uh, his maternal grandparent was called Morris and uh, lived in a, a North Wales town called Ishtibifan. 
Uh, now, so I, uh, since I do come from Wales, and I'm probably the only University of Illinois president who ever will, because uh, it's a <laughs> tiny country, it doesn't teach ego, um, because we're right next to this other place called England, which is uh, pretty domineering and dominating. But let, let, and it's got a, a language that's almost impossible to uh, pronounce. But I do want to teach you one word, if I might, because I think it's symbolic of what I think University of Illinois is. And it's, a, it's an easy one to pronounce. Um, it's hoil, rhymes with loyal. So can you all say hoil? Hoil, OK. So uh, easy to remember, I'm going to rhymes with loyal. It's hoil with an H guttural. And what it means is courage, bravery, heart, stick with itness, persistence, getting things done, moving forward. It's how you win rugby games sometimes. And, uh, but you, you take your hoil with you. And I think that is something that is, we have in spades at the University of Illinois in Hoyle. And so did Lincoln, by the way. Also, Jefferson was Welsh. I have to, you know, when you, when you come from a country like that, you have to drop names. Uh, otherwise, uh, they say, where's that? What part of England is it? And that's really, really difficult for me to take. So we have three universities. Uh, we have a new marketing strategy. I hope you've seen some of the, uh, and heard some of the things on the radio and the billboards and so forth. And when we launched that marketing strategy, Tom Hardy tells me that our hits to our website went up 16-fold. So we have been, I think, guilty of hiding our light under a bit of a bushel. And we don't want to do that because the impact is extraordinary and we need to move forward. Each of our universities is a heavyweight in their own class. And I'm going to start, with your indulgence, with a short video that uh, we put together to kick off our philanthropic campaign that I think exhibits what you might call hoil, rhymes with loyal. OK, here we go. It doesn't add up, but it sure makes sense. This place has always outpaced its potential. Because we ask what can happen when you build an institution that can do everything in what was once the middle of nowhere or in the heart of a colossal city or this guy's hometown. What if you do all three? One plus one plus one equals infinity. We're 700,000 strong. Actually, make that more than a million. And we're all after the awe-inspiring. Going higher than ever before. Deeper, too. Our volumes go up to 12 million, and we were the first to put them online. We put 1.2 billion videos on there, too. We kick open doors and lock down threats. We're all for Nobel causes. Cure for cancer? Let's stick a supercomputer on that. And while we're at it, put some of our smartest on diabetes and sickle cell too. Our ambition is never blind, but we make sure justice is, and he isn't, ever again. Made you look, made you laugh, made you cry, made you cheer, made you $14 billion. Made to do more for the state and the world all at once. Here's where we're headed. Put a stop to epidemics and injustices before they even start. The water crisis, the food crisis, the poverty crisis, the education crisis, any crisis. Here is where it all gets solved. And here, here too. Zero in on any one moment and you could miss the movement. Single us out and you can't see the scale but step back because all together we're extraordinary so thank you thank you So when I spoke to this group uh, shortly after taking office three years ago, and incidentally three years is like past infant death syndrome for a university president. It's into um, adolescent uh, hormone uh, time period, I think. So if I sound a little bit puppy-like and optimistic, it's just that's who I am. And, uh, and, but we're on a roll. I hope you can see that and feel it as, uh, as your university. So when I spoke last time, this is a slide that I showed then, which I'm about to show now. 
uh, I came up with this Hokie equation cobbled together as a geophysicist. Every, everything is systems, and I do with equations. I, I'm still waiting for the royalty checks, but they haven't started rolling in. But for me, it, it is simple, and it rings as true then as uh, now as it did then. Our impact, and we're all about impact, is a product, a multiplication of excellence and scale. You can be excellent and affect a few people, or you can have massive scale with a watered down effect. If you have both, you have impact. The UVI system packs a wallop on both counts. But it also checks off another box that really rockets our power into rarefied air, and that's the exponent that I call magic. Now, if you know, you're all mathematicians, of course, but if that magic is less than unity, you're limiting your impact. If it's two, five, a hundred, you're shooting up um, non-linearly. Now, so what that means, that's where institutional leadership comes in. That's where a board of trustees that's determined and outbound, that's where you make uh, the case for interdisciplinary research and open your doors for access and success and civic engagement. Magic involved, involves collaboration, collaborative settings, leadership, fearlessness, we need to take risks and not be risk averse. Academic freedom is very important. We need brilliant scholars who can express that brilliance and a community that's in, in full support. So you're part of the magic that is in the exponent and increases the impact of the University of Illinois system. And these are game-changing institutional attributes that, uh, so obviously I'm paid to do this, but it is a special place, uh, one with excellence and scale raised to the power of magic. And so this is the second time, you invite me back in three years, I'll, uh, I'll have the same equation probably. Um, our universities though today comprise the state's largest educator, and pump nearly $14 billion into the Illinois economy every year. And that's uh, an external group that, uh, not us uh, doing the analysis, but an external group that's looking at economic impact. $14 billion, just if you know, is, is bigger than Caterpillar's global, uh, global number. So we're big and we have Illinois in the name, so we're not going anywhere. We transform lives on a large scale. Nearly 84,000 students last fall, a record high for the fifth straight year. And Bob Wilson and I look over the enrollment numbers every week, and we're on uh, track for another world-breaking record uh, the coming fall. So we'll exceed that record. And in fact, we're on track for our strategic enrollment plan. In fact, we're, we have a plan, and we're actually doing it, which is not altogether usual sometimes in higher education, but we're following our, our, our plans. And as I mentioned, 22,000 new graduates into the workforce annually, and that's enough to populate a city the size of Charleston or East Moline or Park Forest every single year, the talent and the human capital that flows out. Building on a global alumni base that is well over 700,000 strong, including 400,000 in Illinois. And just to put that 700,000 in context, University of Michigan is my like 68, so oh, 580,000 uh, living alumni. So we're bigger than the University of uh, Michigan system. And, uh, and I was there for 20 years, so I can sort of talk about it this way. There's nothing I want better than to beat them on some gridirons for now. But anyway, we'll, we'll work on that. Together, our universities produce leading edge scholarship and discovery that helps drive innovation, progress, and economic growth. And we have uh, a nearly $1 billion annual research portfolio that ranks us among the top university systems in the nation and in the top 25 universities worldwide for innovation. But as uh, Thomas Jefferson once said, who was Welsh, like I said, or at least he believes come, came from Snowdonia, I like the dreams of the future better than the history of the past. So we have developed new strategic plans uh, to do even more. We have a strategic framework that's already been mentioned, and each of our universities has its own strategic plan within that. And we want to uh, do nothing short of reinventing public higher education for the 21st century to meet the needs of students, society, and industry. It's the land-grant mission but modernized and projected into the 21st century. So it's not about being ranked uh, in, in a particular ranking, but it's that impact that I talked about with excellence and scale. So our plans do raise the bar to a very high rung. Uh, we want to be the global model for higher education, a place where the world turns for pioneering ideas. We are already on the way. We do have momentum. Um, it's picking up steam even during the um, two-year budget impasse 
And there's something about shared adversity that brings out the best in people. I think there was a coming together, it was a tightening of the belt, and there was a sense of purpose that has really allowed us to weather that period uh, effectively and come out stronger than ever. We are committed to uh, continue our enrollment growth that runs counter to most public universities in Illinois, but a plan to top 93,000 students, which is a nearly 15% increase by 2021. So watch that number, uh, and we're on track to get to that number. Predominantly Illinois natives. Um, four out of every five of our undergraduates are Illinois residents. Uh, again, unlike Michigan, where it's 42% of uh, University of Michigan, uh, Michigander res residents. So we're on track. We know we are for the state of Illinois. Uh, we know we're large. We need to keep that excellence at the highest, uh, uh, highest level. First time freshman applications and admissions are up over 6% as we speak, uh, which are both uh, world record highs for the University of Illinois system. So in terms of the demand side, there's no question that our product is in demand. And we've admitted over more than 7% uh, Illinois residents this year. Enrollment growth was uh, supported by an in-state tuition freeze that we put in place that will extend to a fourth consecutive year next fall. So uh, Michael and I, who arrived about the same time, has, we, and Robert came a little bit later, we've not raised tuition for in-state residents by a dime in uh, now four years. That's the longest tuition freeze for four decades since the 1970s. So if you're looking for a commitment for affordability, access, you don't need to look much farther than that uh, fact. And that uh, system-wide enrollment has increased nearly 7% since in-state in tuition last increased in the fall of 2014. As you know, there's a four-year guarantee on tuition too, so we've, uh, we're trying to make our product affordable. And part of that, frankly, is competitive aspects. We want to out-compete, not just on excellence and quality, we want to out-compete on cost as well, our, our, uh, our competitor universities. And, and we want to really work on the, um, to stem the out-migration of students, high school students and graduating students from Illinois and uh, provide them with the kind of opportunities to uh, have wonderful uh, careers, raise families, buy houses, contribute to the, ta to the tax base of the state after they graduate. So our mantra is affordability, access, completion, you gotta do your homework and complete. Uh, but then success in the civil workforce. So we're also investing in infrastructure, and this is probably not as widely appreciated, uh, but in the last four years, we have invested $1.2 billion in our physical infrastructure to ensure that the students who come truly do get a world-class education in, in the laboratories and classroom settings, et cetera. Uh, so over the last, uh, that's the number over the last five years, I should say. And the list includes a host of projects that reflect our unwavering commitment to transformative experience for students. And they include our first ever student union in Springfield. If you haven't visited that campus, please go. It's a beautiful campus. And this is the, we like to think of it as the hearthstone of that campus. It's a gathering place. It creates a, a quad-like field. Uh, and in fact, when we're looking at the applications and enrollments, uh, we're looking at numbers like 17% there, which I think is driven in part by the fact that we are on the move. First ever student union in Springfield. It's not like a replacement student union. They didn't have one. Um, in, uh, you've all seen probably this wonderful building arising uh, that's very visible from Roosevelt and so forth and we'll have, uh, I'm sure Michael was planning a big red dot there somewhere, uh, an innovative residence and learning center rising at UIC that is a, a, a pioneering form of public-private partnerships. No state funding is going into this, but this will enable UIC to, uh, to have more residential students. It's been known primarily as a commuter school, students coming and going. We're now gonna have more residential students, and that's important. And then, of course, the Siebel Center for Design in Urbana, a unique, which is going up as we speak, a, a unique new hub of student-focused learning and discovery. Uh, which is going to transform the way undergraduate teams are formed and, and work collectively on interdisciplinary problems in this uh, wonderful new setting. So these projects together, and there's just a handful of, of the longer list, um, uh, reflect the high priority that the Board of Trustees has placed 
on our facilities in January. And uh, the board has asked, uh, directed me to work with our chancellors and provost to develop now a long range capital plan to ensure that these state owned properties, uh, future bricks and mortar investments support our strategic goals. That's exciting prospect. We are also, of course, investing in faculty. The scholarship and the brilliance is based on, on key people. And we do have a challenge here that we're, uh, we're looking at. Over the last several years, as I mentioned, our student enrollment has grown 7%. Our faculty uh, growth has only been 2%. Uh, I want to redress that. We need to have the appropriate number of faculty. So we're going on a tear of, of faculty recruitment. So if you're worried about poaching, et cetera, we're going to be the poachers, not the poachees. Uh, and uh, we started that already. And last month, I, I announced plans to work with campus leadership on an initiative that will uh, be a recruiting initiative for faculty. They're at the heart of everything we do. Uh, world-class talent behind the teaching and innovation defining our excellence. Um, so uh, after uh, we intend to expand the total number of faculty by several hundreds over the next five years, but as with everything we do, there will be a careful analytical process where we go through, look strategically at growth, demand, supply areas and where the needs are, and we'll have a strategic plan that we will, by heck, will follow in the next several years on, on growth in faculty. And that's possible only because uh, we've been managed fiscally well. Um, and that's thanks to a lot of the leadership that we've had. Cost control efficiencies, we, we've been through a, uh, a hiring freeze in administration. We have done everything we can uh, to ensure that we are using shared services where appropriate and that our costs are contained. And now we have restored state funding and um, even though we haven't raised tuition in four years, we have more students. So in fact there are more dollars coming in because of the larger number of students. And in the last calendar year our, um, our revenue side grew more than 7% and our expenses grew only 1.6% which is less than inflation. So we're in a strong financial position. Now as the state's bond rating goes up we are going to go up with it because our inherent strength is, is very good in terms of fiscally. So we're investing in faculty and we have found $60 million to put down already in the next three years. We've made a start on this. This is a matching program to support the startup costs, the one-time start costs. When you recruit in a wonderful scholar, um, uh, they might need a lab or they may need graduate students or you know, infrastructure to support their intellectual and endeavors. And these dollars are available now for our provosts and our deans to go out recruiting superstars and, uh, or proto-superstars or to be superstars. But we want, we want the floods of these important careers to be spent here at the University of Illinois. Um, I'm excited to announce that uh, Bob Wilson, I think next week, will name the first set of uh, star faculty recruits. And I believe it's six or seven, some number like that, uh, including from some famous universities that don't know it yet, but we're about to, uh, we're, we're about to uh, uh, make a claim here. And then, of course, you probably all know about the Discovery Partners Institute, or I hope you know about the Discovery Partners Institute. Um, we have plans to expand our impact in terms of um, an engine of progress for the state and economic growth. And I, I really want to thank uh, Deputy Governor Munger for all her work in this regard. And of course, uh, Governor Rauner has been uh, a visionary leader behind this. But this is a through and through bipartisan effort uh, across the state to build out and to take advantage of the assets we have, the intellectual assets, the physical assets, the arable soil, the fresh water, the institutional capacity, the uh, bandwidth um, that we have, and I always stress bandwidth because Chicago has more bandwidth than any other place on the planet, and that's power. We have a 300 gigabit per link, per second link to Amsterdam from UIC, for example, and that's a huge pipe. And that's gonna be important for the future of industries, all industries that need data management, data mining, visualization, uh, subsetting, uh, looking at smart systems and how uh, things work. So our Discovery Partners Institute will contribute to the state GDP with global impact. It'll take advantage of the placement, not just in Chicago, but statewide through a set of hubs that will be distributed across the whole state, fostering collaboration between students, faculty, and companies, small, medium, large companies, solving problems, creating new jobs, 
allowing our students access to interesting projects, uh, letters of reference, internships, and potentially the opportunity to build their own uh, companies from scratch. Um, and so this is a big idea. Uh, but we are a big institution and uh, there will be many partners including as founding partners University of Chicago and Northwestern uh, but there are many others international as well that will be uh, coming to the table and this will be home to literally hundreds of uh, world-class researchers top faculty from across our system and thousands of students coming in and out and working closely with uh, the private sector and you know, uh, you've all heard it's the economy stupid. Our version of that, it's the student experience. Uh, uh, it's all about our students. So when we interact with the private sector and we do that intensively, we talk about the value proposition, their bottom line, et cetera. For us, it's the student experience. When the student experience, making a world-class experience for our students matches what companies need, then watch out, things can really, really happen. That's where magic uh, really occurs. So DPI, as we call it, um, is not dots per inch, uh, will be a beautiful um, new institute on currently vacant land um, uh, along the Chicago River uh, that will be a, a magnet destination for the intellectual power that our universities together can bring to the table. And uh, this is a rendering and uh, that's a, an idea of what, uh, what this new institute will look like in Chicago. And as you all know, I hope, um, uh, just a few days ago, Governor Rauner signed the budget, this year's budget, which includes uh, $500 million to initiate uh, this project. So it... That's very exciting for us. Uh, uh, we are, you know, make no small plans, right, is the Illinois mantra in the Chicago mantra. This is a big plan, and when, uh, when people think about uh, Silicon Valley um, and catching up, it said, I don't like that either, that kind of language. We're going to leapfrog Silicon Valley, and Silicon Valley's 1970s innovation. <laughs> it's spinning things out. We're going to spin them in. We're going to spin them in and get the adjacency, the intellectual adjacency, the vibrancy, the excitement, the magic to make things happen right here in, in Chicago and across the state in these hubs. And last time I looked, uh, Chicago is the capital of the Midwest. And uh, the Midwest is a third of the GDP of the United States. Chicago doesn't have competition, I don't think much, from Cleveland or Detroit, or perhaps, I don't know, I hope I'm not goring any oxes here today, but, um, but let's take advantage of that setting and that placement and the bandwidth and the institutional magnificence that we, uh, that we have here. And this, I have to say, is gonna be about job and wealth creation, but as importantly, it's about the creation of social equity building capacity, building our social system so that fewer people are left behind, there's more wholesome uh, opportunities for society in general. And that's a wildly exciting thing. If you think about the future of the planet, it's all gonna be urban. We can model this future right here, taking advantage of our institutions. And uh, so there's another little picture of um, the, uh, the river walk there. The DPI is part of what we call the Illinois Innovation Network, which is an expansion across the whole state, including many um, hubs, which will be regionally tailored, appropriate, often in, on, uh, inst on educational institutions, um, components that will be connected together and not competing, but collaborating across space. So this is lifting downstate as much as, uh, as uh, 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 the Chicago area. And of course, our three uh, wonderful universities will all be uh, strongly participating in this. So the tremendous scale, we have extension offices all across the state. The partnering with other educational institutions and with companies uh, allows a fluidity and a, and, a, and a development of human capital that will, in part, re reduce the number of high schoolers that leave town for better pastures. We'll retain our graduates when they graduate because there'll be so many opportunities who would want to go anywhere else. And affordability is a big deal. In Silicon Valley, which I've knocked, I've knocked a few things, but I hope not too badly, it can cost you $43,000 to park your car. Um, uh, and uh, so we've got to watch out for affordability too. 
because the next generations are going to want to have access to amenities, want to have social networks, want to be uh, able to move around from job to job in, in effective ways. And that can be really fostered uh, with a, a modern form of urban innovation and connected across the state and then, of course, around the world. And there will be some announcements soon about international partners for this as well. It's, um, so do I have to point this there? So you're asking now, well, what, what is this guy smoking, right? Um, you must be asking, did he, what did he have for breakfast and so forth? But it, it's, we have a legacy that we can build on. Um, uh, University of Illinois uh, uh, alums founded all these companies. You recognize some of those logos, I hope. You collect those companies together. Last year, they were worth $75 billion. One year, 20 companies. We have thousands of companies that are spinning out of the University of Illinois system. This is part of the product. Doesn't even get added into our 14 billion a year economic impact, but the impact of the intellectual creation of new knowledge and the deployment of new knowledge is of inestimable value. And too many of these companies went west or they went east, and, um, uh, which is great. Um, but now we want to keep more of them in, uh, in our state. And I think that's important for the future. So this uh, deputy governor is an investment, not a cost. It's an investment in the state. Uh, and we can show through econometric studies that a dollar from the tax base to the University of Illinois system returns 19% to the tax base every year. Better than my retirement um, uh, uh, deal. So. Um, benefits will be uh, multiple, benefits to companies, access, expertise, talent recruitment. Uh, we also have a legislative agenda that has benefits to the state. We want to be involved in attracting corporations. Uh, we want to look at economically distressed. We want to be solving, as the video said, today's family of problems, including, um, including inner city problems. Um, and a talent recruitment and investment. So watch for our legislative agenda. Part of it we're calling IPAC for the Illinois uh, Performance and Accountability Commitment. This now has over 30 co-sponsors, both sides of the aisle in Springfield. Hasn't, we haven't asked for it to come to a vote yet, but would reset the relationship between the flagship public university system and the state with, within which it resides with a five-year outlook on, on uh, predictable funding, robust predictable funding is what we're seeking, in return for outcome metrics, graduation rates, retention rates, numbers of uh, Illinois residents uh, graduating, uh, financial aid, underrepresented minorities, et cetera. So this would be uh, the most sophisticated, I would say, compact um, in the country in terms of resetting the relationship between public higher education and, and the state governance system. And I would say, I hope that you'd agree with me, we need to, uh, to not go through a period of uh, ups and downs like we've just experienced uh, again. So uh, we're looking at that. Finally, a, a few other bragging points. We have um, things to brag about. Um, our student retention and success is well above the national averages, 89% uh, of our students are retained. They don't bounce out and not get their degrees. 76% of our uh, students uh, go on to graduate, much higher numbers than the national averages. And we want to keep and build upon those kind of metrics. So uh, a degree from the University of Illinois system is worth something. You get a higher first job salary. You pay down your debts faster. You have less debt than national norms. And uh, retention and graduation rates are high. So there's a lot here for you to be proud of. We have launched a philanthropic campaign. And I just want you to remember the number. It's $3.1 billion we are raising. And we are actually halfway there now. We've raised $1.6 billion just in the last three years. And it's a composite. It's made up of the Campaign for Illinois that uh, Robert Jones leads. Uh, they've raised $1.32 billion uh, towards a goal of $2.25 billion. UIC Ignite, um, to do with flames, is, uh, has raised $342 million uh, towards a goal of $750 million. And Reaching Stella in Springfield has raised $21 million uh, towards a goal of uh, $40 million. So uh, with our 700,000 alums and our, uh, I think, the exciting and compelling narrative that we can weave together, 
uh, we would like your help, of course, in, in talking up uh, Illinois as a state and its public higher education system. Uh, but we're already halfway there. And so uh, I like to say you ain't seen nothing yet, uh, uh, which is also a Welsh term that we used to use. <laughs> but, so we have three universities, um, one system, infinite possibilities. President Kennedy once said that things don't just happen. Things are made to happen. So we need to be makers. We need to actually have a, a purposeful, intentional future. And it should be ambitious. If we're not stretching further than we think we can actually realistically get, then we're not doing our job. Um, and, uh, and it's true even for time-proven entities that are 150 years uh, old. So we, we're never going to stop working to build it on this momentum. We have our strategic framework. And this is the unanimously approved by the board uh, th three or so years, years ago now, where we entitled it the Publics University. Um, of the public belonging to the public. That means you uh, and, and everybody else in the state. And uh, this was a, a, one of these uh, apocryphal phrases that I was told sometime that President, Clinton, President, President um, uh, Lincoln used way back when. Uh, but we can't find it. So I can't, uh, I can't attribute it to President Lincoln, but it's something he might have said or might have wanted to say. <laughs> Uh, and, and so we've co-opted it anyway uh, as the public's university. So, and the subtitle is Optimizing Impact for the Public Good, which as you remember now, it's about excellence, it's about scale, and it's about the magic that you can bring to the table with, with vibrant, effective, principled, uh, full of integrity, leadership, and, uh, and support. So thanks for inviting me. Thanks for your time and support. Okay, that was terrific, wasn't it? It's really an exciting time to be a citizen in Illinois and affiliated with any of our flagship universities here like the U of I in Champaign, Chicago, Springfield, Peoria, and more. So, anybody has any questions? Ah, I see a card back there. So, Caitlin from our staff will pick up your question. We'll try to handle as many of these as we possibly can. You know, President Colleen was really, really upbeat today, wasn't he? You know why? His home team, the Cardiff football team, has been promoted to the Premier League. <laughs> On the other hand, another team from Wales was relegated down, but we won't talk about that. Anyhow, we have a number of questions here. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, this is from Craig Vodnik, who's affiliated with Clever Bridge. What programs does the U of I have, oh, this is a softball, that can compete with the MIT Media Lab? I could, uh, I could give my little MIT joke, but I won't. Um, uh, you already picked on UCLA. Yeah, I already picked on uh, that. So um, we are so much bigger than MIT. Uh, we graduate 3,000 graduates, engineering graduates, a year, which is more than MIT, Caltech, Stanford uh, combined. Uh, by about a thousand a year. So we are a machine of engineering town. That's one thing. The Media Lab is really interesting and important. I visited there and when we were starting to think about the plans for the design center in, um, in Urbana, there's a whole design theory about uh, education and it really started at Stanford. Uh, and I visited there too. And these are, these are educational entities that bring teams together to work on problems and are really very effective in inspiring and motivating uh, students. So the Media Lab is a great example. We have a great example at UIC of the Innovation Center. And if you want to see this happening in real time, that's worth a visit here, where teams are working with BMW and Caterpillar at UIC on, on projects like you'll find in the, in the Media Lab at, at MIT. So we, uh, we're not copying in any slavish way. Um, uh, and these are wonderful other institutions, don't get me wrong. They're wonderful other institutions, but we have something going here that is truly remarkable, and uh, we're going to build out on it, too. It's all about modern pedagogy and making sure that the student experience 
is truly world class. It's going to be about the students, not about bragging rights so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is from Mary Basil Christopher, who's um, affiliated with Haworth. Her question is, how has the public-private partnership P3 model in recent projects played a role in meeting the goals of the university? I believe if I'm, if I'm right, we've just started the P3 model and uh, Chancellor Imeridis has been, I think, very successful in our first major project there that you see going up the, in, the, in, the, in the dorm and uh, it's a combined dorm and classroom uh, facility there. Um, we do see this as, a, as a, a way forward. There's still some procurement hurdles in terms of duration of lease and so forth, and so we're advocating in Springfield that uh, when you have a public-private partnership like that, the private donor typically wants longer than a 10-year uh, outlook, and right now there are legislative restrictions in statute that limit that. So we would like to have those lifted, and then this will be really important uh, for the future on all three of our campuses and for the Discovery Partners Institute too, which is going to be, in essence, a public-private partnership. Okay, thank you. Uh, this question is from City Club member Carolyn Craycraft, who, by the way, was with the British Consulate General. She's now retired. Carolyn's question. How will you guarantee the future of liberal arts, which she sees as essential to all to think critically and write positively, something like that? Thank you, thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, um, we uh, absolutely need to secure the future of the liberal arts, the arts and the humanities, critical thinking, discernment, uh, reasoning, reading, uh, knowing the difference between truth and falsehood, uh, using uh, intellectual uh, analytical tools to um, and expressing values out is all part of our educational experience. So uh, universities like ours um, have the wonderful um, benefit, in fact, the, the, the privilege of being able to cut across all of these different domains. It's all human expression, one form or another, right? Um, I'm the nerd engineer with a pointed head, but, uh, but the arts and humanities have to be really central, and I would say not hand servant, but central to the core mission for all the reasons that uh, I know you, you're, you're thinking of. Okay, thank you. Um, this is from Megan Bassett, who's with Dugan Bassett Consulting. Her question is, why has the enrollment of blacks at the flagship university stagnated or decreased, and what is the system doing to address this? It's a, it hasn't stagnated or decreased. It's, it's grown, but not fast enough. There's a, a long way to go, and we look at that. Bob and I look at those numbers uh, weekly. Um, we're not at, at the flagship, you mean uh, Urbana Champagne, of course. We have three flagships, we, uh, but that is the flagship, I guess. Um, uh, and it's, uh, it's over 500, which is, uh, we were at an all-time high last year, but there's more to do. Uh, it's nowhere near the sort of national demographic uh, numbers of 13, 14%, and we need to work hard on that. We have a lot of programs in place. And in fact, Chancellor Jones is a national leader in this regard and is very much in the leadership of the APLU, which is the national body that looks at these kinds of demographic challenges and changes. So we're working hard on that front. Sure, and you thought the three flagships were the Nina Pinta and the Santa Maria, huh? <laughs> okay, uh, this is from U of I alum Bill Forsyth. How does the U of I credits rating compare to the state of Illinois' credit rating? We are four notches above the, uh, the state of Illinois credit rating. And um, when the state of Illinois credit rating went down a notch, we went down a notch. And it wasn't anything that we could imagine that was associated with. So we're tied to the state. There's no question about that. And of course, we're a state entity. Our buildings are all state property. So, but I think turning that question around, Bill, is uh, how can we help the state really prosper into the next decades? And we all know that the state has a fiscal challenge that's very significant and big. Uh, and it probably not 
easily amenable to either taxes or cuts in, in any one year, but I think we need to work to raise the tax base. And that's why the things we're working on in, in, in preserving talent and actually turning those arrows around so people are not leaving, they're actually coming. Uh, and they're coming because of all of the opportunities that are seen here. That's the way you grow a tax base in a state like Illinois, and that, that's what's going to uh, uh, lead these rating agencies to really rethink the whole thing. And I think we can turn it around very quickly with the kind of infusion that now we're seeing from, uh, from the bipartisan state leadership and, and the city leadership. I should have mentioned uh, Mayor Emanuel, very supportive for this. Okay, we have time for two quick uh well, one quick question, but uh, I just want to ask um, Deputy Governor Munger relating to this question. You know, the next time you have a discussion with the governor, tell him we'd love to have him here anytime, 24-7, okay? Great. Good. Oh, last question from a U of I person, Larry Epley. Don't forget, you only have a few minutes because this is what we call a really open-ended question. Can you talk more about the role of a land-grant university in the 21st century? Oh, well, Larry, that's a one of, that's the softest of, uh, yeah, there are 56 minutes of the typical lecture. Um, it's an interesting question, though, because the land-grant impetus came out, you know, post-Civil War, a difficult time for the country, and it was all about connecting education for large numbers of people, working classes as well, to support the economy, the regional economy and, and the local economy. A noble, magnificent concept, and we still use that phrase all the time. We need to modernize it. And it used to be in the 1870s that it was an agrarian economy, and that led to 4-H and extension and many of the things that really have stood the test of time. But now we, uh, we need to recognize it's much more multifaceted. It's health and wellness, it's, it's transportation, it's energy, it's water, it's food and agriculture, it's uh, what we call predictive analytics, which is uh, information technologies applied across the board. The new land grant has to service a much more complex and globally interconnected uh, economy. And that is very exciting, actually. It's very exciting. Our young people coming in as students, they want to change the world. They want to participate in that. So it's grown from its agrarian roots, literally. You know, I know it's a pun maybe, but it's grown to uh, encompass the concept of, um, of supporting uh, public good through service, through educational, through new knowledge acquisition and new knowledge deployment. That's the land grant, and uh, we want to um, be the pioneer for the next uh, wave of what that is and looks like so that uh, years from now people will say, well, Illinois really pioneered that land grant for the 21st century. We may have to rename it, but uh, I think uh, you get my drift, Larry. Okay. okay. Thank you, President Colleen. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs>